Hi everyone! So today I'm going to be taking you on a plant shop tour of one of my absolute favorite plant shops in the area and that is Rubles on Rosemead. Now Rubles is a local family-owned shop. They actually own several locations, three in total I believe, in the Dallas area but by far the location on Rosemead is my favorite out of all of them and lucky for me because it's the one that's closest to where I live. Now this is a rather large shop that we're going to and in addition to all of the fabulous plants that they have, they they also have a ton of planty accessories, including planters, plant hangers, and then they even have furniture as well. And I honestly wish I had known that they existed when I bought the house that I'm living in now because I would have gotten quite a few pieces of my furniture from there. But enough of me blabbing on, let's just head over there and start taking a look at what they've got. Okay, you guys, before we get started, they do have an excellent selection of both large and small plants, and I absolutely love that about them. And everything in here just always looks so lush and green, and it's just fabulous. I, I just love being in here. But let's go ahead and start looking at some plants. I do see that we have some kind of mid-size Dracaena plants down here, and then this beautiful palm here. And I can't remember right now, I think this might be a lady palm. If it's not, I will of course flash what it is on screen for you. A very large one in a very nice pot. And that is another thing that I love about them is just all of the pot options and everything that they have here. It's just, you'll see when we go inside, but here we have some snake plants. So some San Severia, actually technically now Dracaena, they were reclassified. We've got the bird's nest varieties, which are these little guys here. And then further down the line there, we will see in a second, some of the taller snake plants that you're used to seeing, but they also have the other fernwood varieties here, which are the thinner leafed ones. I really, really like how these look. Like if I ever got a San Severia, or sorry, I keep saying San Severia because I'm just used to that Dracaena snake plant, whatever you want to call it. I have told you guys before, I'm not a big fan of the big traditional ones, but I like these more thinner leafed varieties. And they do have some of the cylindrical ones it looks like over here as well, which I like these a lot too. Definitely, definitely more my jam than the traditional snake plants. But we've got some slightly larger ones as we move along. Here's more, here's some really big cylindrical ones. Those ones that look like fingers coming up out of the soil. I was hoping maybe they had some starfish ones. They do, it's on the other side. So we'll get to those in a second. But then we've got the, like I said, more traditional snake plants that you're used to seeing. And if I turn around over here, we've got some much larger plants, including some palms. And down here, some ferns. Okay guys, so this is a Euphorbia Sticks of Fire. Look how massively tall this thing is. It's giant. I wonder how much they want for it. Let's look. Let's see. Okay, that tag says basically $525 for this very large Euphorbia. This thing is amazing looking. Okay, guys, so I came around the other side here so you can see the starfish Sansevieria, aka Dracaena, but I absolutely love this one. This is another one I would consider getting if I was going to get one of these plants. And then if we turn around here, we've got a lot more ferns over here. And as you can see, I love how they style just, just the shop. They style it. They put their planters out so that they can make things look more decorative. And look at the little, like, pumpkin carriage type thing back over there. I mean, ugh, what's not to love, you guys? I love this place. Up here, we've got some more ferns in hanging baskets. So over here around the little pumpkin carriage type thing here, we do have some aglionemas. This looks like the Maria, which is the one, the type of aglionema, one of the types that I own. And then we've got, I think looks like some spathophyllum, so some peace lilies inside of here. We've got, I think this is another type of Dracaena, if I recall correctly. I'm not exactly sure the variety, if I can find it, 
I will flash it on screen for you. And then looks like maybe we've got, what do we have down here? Oh, these are just Green Island ficus. So this is a type of ficus plant that has smaller leaves than like, for example, your ficus elasticas. And then up here, we've got some neon pothos and some flaming cadies, which are scientifically kalanchoes, cal as I think how you pronounce it. Funny story, you guys, my sister got one of these shortly before she went on maternity leave. She had it in her office at work. Nobody took care of it the entire time she was on maternity leave. And she was on maternity leave for, let's see, October, November, and December in like the first week of January. Nobody watered it. She came back and somehow it was still alive and still had flowers. That is a hardy plant right there. But moving along, I do see we have a beautiful looking syngonium right here, just a green syngonium. You guys are gonna have to excuse the background noise. They have fans that kick on every now and again to circulate the air in here. And that's what you're hearing. But this guy is 30 bucks, which is not bad for a six inch hanging basket of syngonium. And then up here, we have some of the chameleon ZZ plants. So I think I discussed this in a video with you guys before. This is probably like the newest variety of ZZ plants that we've seen hit the market. They hit the market sometime in 2022, so last year. And they are just absolutely beautiful. They come in with these kind of yellow leaves that have that green veining on them. And then as they mature off, they turn into this kind of standard green color, but definitely a beautiful plant. And then next to these, they do have some Raven ZZ plants. This is actually where I got my Raven ZZ plant from, and it was busting out of its pot when I got it. These look a little bit more juvenile and like still fitting in their pots compared to the one I got, but still beautiful looking plants. And then we've got some Calathea mosaicas over here looking lovely. Now I have not owned one of these, but I have heard that this is one of the easiest to care for Calatheas that are out there. So if you are a person who has struggled with Calatheas in the past, this might be a good one for you guys to try. Sometimes this will also be labeled as a Calathea network as well. Here we've got some Ficus Elastica Burgundies looking absolutely lovely. They're about $19 for a six inch pot. And moving along over here, we've got our Ficus Elastica Rubies. And it doesn't look like they have any Tenekis that I've seen so far, but the rubies look fabulous here. And they are branching on their own here, you guys, or maybe somebody made them do this, but almost all of these have multiple branches. I don't see that very often. In fact, this is like, especially in like a six inch like this, I see it more often in like the bigger pots, but that's pretty impressive and that's nice. I like it when you don't have to try to make them branch themselves. It's just, you know, it's always easier to buy it when it's already done it than to try and make it to it on your own, if you know what I mean. And then over here, we've got some Calathea Freddies, and this is also where I got my Calathea Freddy. We've got some triangular, triangularis ficus, ficus triangularis, is that what these are called? I'll flash it up on screen for you guys. I really like how these look, but I have heard people have had difficult times with these. I don't know, anybody out there own one of these? Comment down below and let us know if you found it to be easy or difficult. I've just heard that they're more difficult than like, for example, Ficus Elastica, but I really like how they look with the shape of those leaves and that variegation on those leaves. They're very cute. And they're only 20 bucks for these six inch pots, which is pretty decent. And then over here we've got, I think this is an Aurelia. Yes, these are Aurelias. And then we've got a fiddle leaf fig over here. I'm actually starting to see less and less fiddle leaf figs in plant shops, you guys. I think maybe the hype has started to die down or maybe just everybody owns one now so they aren't carrying as many because nobody needs to buy one. I don't know. More Dracaena over here. There is a very large bird of paradise hanging out at the end over here. I'll see if I can get it from a different angle for you guys. But we do have some Philodendron Prince of Orange over this way. We've got some baby Monsteras hanging out over here as well. The sun is now trying to make an appearance for the first time today. It's about time. It's been super gloomy all day today. We've got a Philodendron Birkin. 
And then over here we've got some alocasia. It says it's a colcalata, new gold in parentheses. Never, I've heard of the colcalata, I think that's how you pronounce that. I've never heard of this new gold variety, but still very lovely looking. Here's a better shot of that bird of paradise, you guys. And that leaf that is lighter green right here, that is the newest leaf. It just hasn't fully hardened off. Look how massive that is. That is beautiful. And then coming around here, we do have some staked up philodendron brazils looking very lovely. We've got some more varieties of dracaena. We've got some very large bromeliads going on in the center there. Moving along here, we've got some, <laughs> we've got the aglionema that I bought for the video where I showed you dividing a plant. This is the shop that I bought it at. And so these have plastic cages around the roots. I know for a fact because I, discovered it when I was trying to film that video for you guys, but I love how these look. I have sold all of these that I divided you guys for my plants that I'm selling for charity. And by the way, you guys, I have almost sold out. In the last week, I don't know what has happened, but people have gone crazy over them. I have sold so many. I am so happy. My kitchen is starting to look empty because my prop carts are empty. So I've moved them out of the kitchen. I am gonna have to start propagating some more plants soon to sell more. But coming along here, we do have some Tenanthi setosas down here, some rather large ones. And then up here, we have some beautiful Calathea ornatas, aka Gopersha ornatas, aka pinstripe Calatheas. I wonder how much they're going for nowadays. Let's see. These are $22 for a very full looking six inch pot. Just love the way these plants look. I know. I know they can be super finicky, you guys. A lot of you have had problems with them. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at the larger ones down here. These are in like 10 inch pots. Those are huge and they still look good. So it is possible to keep them looking good, you guys. If they do kind of get funky and start dying back on you, don't throw them away. They will come back. I have proven that time and time again. And this guy will too. This is the rattlesnake Calathea, AKA Calathea, well, when it was actually a Calathea, it was a Calathea lancifolia. It is now a Gopersha in Cygnus, technically. I know it's all confusing, you guys. I'm just gonna keep telling you every time, so hopefully, eventually, you'll be able to commit it to memory if you hear it enough from me. But then we also have what I think is a, I think this might be a Vitata. I can never tell the Vitata and the Beauty Star apart. Really have a hard time with that, but I think it's a Vitata. Let me get down there and see if I can see the label. It doesn't say, it just says Calathea assorted. So we'll just move on. All right, you guys, so up here we have a ton of various hanging philodendron. There is a solid green chordatum on the end there, and then everybody else up here is a Brazil on both sides. And then down here we've got some more aglianemas. And you know what, you guys? I think I saw when I walked in one of the aglianemas that I have really been like admiring. So. Hopefully we'll come across that here in a bit. Let me see what this one's called, if it says. This is Aglianema Lucky in a six inch pot. This is a very interesting coloring. I love those pink stems. That's gorgeous. This is $30, but there's technically four plants growing in that pot already, but I guarantee you they have plastic cages. Just make sure you're checking all your Aglianemas for plastic cages when you buy them, you guys. But then over here we've got, this is what mine looks like pretty much. Let me see what it says this, if it has a label or not. Cause you know, you all keep weighing in on what you think it is. This says it's a wishes. And I think that's what most of you have told me you think mine is. So I think I'm just going to decide that mine is a wishes. Cause this looks very similar to that. This one over here is a sparkling Sarah. I haven't seen many of these in stores. This is very beautiful. Kind of a different shape to that leaf, more elongated. And I love the way the splash looks and the pink down the middle of the leaf. It's fabulous. And then over here, we have a ficus audrey. I really do like the way the ficus audreys look. They're very beautiful. This is only $19 for a six inch pot. Unfortunately, it's not branching like the other ficuses we looked at, but that's okay. Still beautiful plant. And then over here, I think this is another type of Actually, this might be a Diffenbachia. Hold on, let me. Yep, this is a Diffenbachia. I was thinking Aglionema at first, but no. This is a type of Diffenbachia. It doesn't say what type, but Diffenbachias and Aglionemas can look very similar, you guys, especially until they get more mature. I feel like Diffenbachias get bigger faster and maybe just bigger in general, but 
Still beautiful plants, similar care requirements, and I believe in the same family of plants. Over here, we've got another aglionema. This actually looks like a cutlass. I haven't seen a cutlass in stores before. Called so because it's got those very thin, long leaves that remind you of like a, a sword, a cutlass. Very beautiful. This is $22 for a six inch. Got some more aglionemas. And then we've got some Peace Lily Dominoes. So these are starting to show up apparently all over the place around here because I showed you guys when we went shopping to use my birthday gift cards in our last video, I showed you that the other nursery we went to, Callaway's, had these as well. These are $20 for a six inch pot. I think that's pretty equivalent to what Callaway's was selling them for also, but they've got quite a few of them. And then we've got some more Diffenbachia and Aglionema over here at the ends. I think this one is called Silver Bay or Emerald Bay. Let me see if it's labeled. All the labels are turned the other way on me today, you guys. Making my life difficult. Silver Bay. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> Silver Bay. Very beautiful. I wonder, this looks like a, oh, it just says Aglionema assorted, but this looks like it could be a tigress, maybe, possibly. And then over here at the end of this aisle, we've got what I believe is a Calathea Maui? Maui Queen? I'll look it up and flash it on screen for you guys, but I think that's what it is. That's very tall. I don't know if y'all can see, like, that pot is way down in there. That is a tall, tall Calathea right there. And then we've got some cordyline, type of cordyline here. This is related to the Hawaiian TI Red Sister plant that I own. There's another one of those big Calatheas we were just looking at. We've got some more burgundy ficus over here, some large ones. And if we turn around, we've got some larger fiddle leaf figs. This one has lost a lot of its lower leaves for some reason. There's some more Dracini, Dracina, sorry. And this is Song of India is what this one is. This is one of my dad's favorite plants. He first saw it when we were I think when we were in Hawaii and he really liked it, they just don't have a good place for one in their home or I would get him one. They really, honestly, you guys, they don't have great spots for plants in their house, period. Next time I go to visit, I'll walk you through their house and we can discuss what kind of plants might actually work in their house and where that might be beneficial for you guys. So I'll make a mental note to do that next time I'm down there. Some more cordy lines over here. We got some more snake plants. There's a very large snake plant right there. Sorry, the lighting is kind of funky. Let's see if we can come at it from this angle, but that is a very, very, very big snake plant. And then we've got a bunch of spider plants up here. Some more ferns up there. And then we've got what I believe are some neon pothos on stakes over here, planks. And look how big that leaf is. That leaf is like the size of my hand. That's massive. These look gorgeous. There's another Syngonium, green Syngonium over there. There's some more Diffenbachias as we come around here. And then over here we've got some, I think these are Syngonium pink or pink splash. They're not looking, ooh, they're happiest. Not sure what's going on with these guys, but this is like one of the few times that I've seen plants that didn't look too great here. Usually everything looks pretty spectacular, but you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect at any kind of nursery. All right, you guys, I just spotted what I knew I saw somewhere in here when we came in. This is an Aglianema spring snow, and I absolutely love the way this plant looks with that splashy white and green variegation on it. This is $40 for an eight inch pot, but look how full that plant is. That is gorgeous. This is kind of like if I own another Aglianema, this and the wintry wine house are the top two on my list. It's beautiful. I'm also loving this water feature they have going on over here. It's very serene and peaceful and relaxing. All right, you guys. So we talked about plant tags and confusing plant, plant tags. So I'm pretty sure this is a Monstera Siam, but look at the tag for these. I'm gonna try and get you up here. It says Philodendron Monstera Siam. It's just like how we've been talking about how it's confusing that they've been labeling this Monstera deliciosas as Philodendron Monsteras, but still a very beautiful plant. And then also over here, we've got some very large Philodendron Prince of Orange. And then down here, we've got a ton of Philodendron Xanadu. This is one of the ones that has changed genus to Thematophyllum. So up here, we've got some 
Monstera adnesoniae, once again incorrectly labeled as philodendron Swiss cheese. We've got some more Dracaena going on over here, some much larger Dracaenas going on. And then over here, we've got some very lovely looking Stromanthi Trio stars, AKA tricolored ginger plants. You guys know how much I love my plant like this that I own, even though we had problems last winter, we are doing fine this winter. And I just love the way these plants look. Let's see, they're wanting about 20 bucks for a six inch pot of these, and they look absolutely lovely. We also have some Croton varieties going on over here more snake plants back along this wall and then if we come over to here we have some aloe some more song of india back there Ooh, let me come around this way you guys there's a philodendron silver sword hiding out over there okay so we do also have on this side some calathea rosa picta medallions down here and then this beautiful philodendron silver sword that is rather large it is looking like it's in an eight inch or a 10 inch pot. I'm guessing this is gonna be over hundred dollars, but let me set you guys aside and get down there and see if I can see it. Okay, you guys, as I thought, $110 for this staked up silver sword. And there's a bunch more of those staked up silver swords over here as well. They definitely look beautiful. Absolutely stunning, but highly pricey. All right, I was beginning to wonder when we were gonna see some Hoyas because they usually have a lot of Hoyas, but they used to be on the other end of the store. So they've rearranged recently. And then also this, I believe is a Peperomia Hope, I think. Once again, you guys, I swear, none of the tags are facing the direction I need to be able to find out these things for you. Let me swing this around. Yes, Peperomia Hope, they want $45 for this. I really love the way the Peperomia Hopes look. And I saw somebody, I don't even remember who, if I can find out who it was on Instagram, I'll flash it on screen for you. But somebody posted their Peperomia Hope and it was so massive, so long, so full, so beautiful. I was like, okay, I definitely want one now. But once again, not on my wish list currently and I'm not 100% where I would put one, about where I would put one if I got one anyway. And then over here, this almost looks like, um, it is a mixed basket of Hoya. This has that Hoya we were looking at at the other shop, Callaway's that we went to in the last video that I liked. The, I think it's a Carnosa Tricolor Exotica. And it looks like we've got a regular green Carnosa in here as well. That's interesting. I mean, I guess, I guess it works. Not necessarily my jam, but to each their own. And then coming along here, we've got some succulents. So I think this is what's known as a ruby necklace plant. So similar to, for example, your string of bananas or your fish hooks, that kind of plant, I technically think it's a curio. I used to know what it was. I'll flash it on screen for you guys. But when this plant gets sun stressed, it turns this beautiful reddish purple color, hence why it's called a ruby necklace plant. And we are getting closer to the fans, you guys. So hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm sorry about that. I have zero control over that. But here we have the variegated string of hearts. This is where I got my variegated string of hearts, but these are not quite as long and full as the one that I got. So I'm glad I bought that one when I did. And once again, these are $70. We've got a donkey's tail back there. We've got some kind of cacti over here. We've got Christmas cacti right here, some more succulents. And then over here, we've got some rather tall cacti going on. And then we've got lots of desert cacti over here. Desert cacti being the ones that are gonna hurt you if you touch them. Speaking of fish hooks, you guys, here are your string of fish hooks plants. This is once again, Technically they're curio plants now, they used to be senecios, and the fish hooks look very similar to the banana, string of bananas, except that they're considerably longer. I have also seen these labeled as large form string of bananas before as well. And then coming along here, we have some philodendron narrow that aren't looking too, too fabulous. The ones we saw at Callaway's the other day looked a lot better than this. We've got some begonia maculatas going on here. These are by the same company who I will not mention because I tend to trash talk them a lot, but I'm sure you guys can guess who I am talking about. 
These do have fabric plugs on them. So take these out. If you buy these, check around those roots, remove that fabric plug. Over here, we've got some Anthurium radicans. I'm seeing more and more of these. I think we saw some of these at Callaway's as well. They went 40 bucks for a six inch pot of these. And then we've got some global green pothos. So this is green on green variegation pothos. There is a Baltic blue over here, you guys, but that is like the least blue looking Baltic blue I have ever seen. It looks just almost the same color as the pothos here. So I'm not sure what's going on with that or if maybe it got mislabeled perhaps, who knows. And then we've got some golden pothos over here. We've got some neon pothos over here. Some more philodendron brazils at the end over there. We've got some pearls and jade pothos hanging out up here. Some more global green pothos as well. And we've got some more foyas going on over here. And all of these say assorted Hoyas. I know you guys have been talking about how it's really hard to keep track of names on Hoyas. Is that possibly why everybody just puts assorted on everything? Is because it's too hard to figure it out? Like maybe that's what's happening here because more of you commented about Hoyas than anything else on that recent Planty Ranty video I did about naming of plants. So if you guys think I might be right, comment down below and let us know. I love what I am seeing on this plant over here with those leaves coming in that reddish color. So if anybody out there who's a Hoya aficionado knows what this Hoya is, since it doesn't say, let us know. It looks like some type of splash pubicalyx to me, but I don't know if maybe it's a slightly different variety because they're coming in that different color because most of the splash pubicalyx I see around here don't have leaves that come in that color. And then over here, we do have Hoya macrophylla. I do know that because the Hoya that I was given from Aeroid Asia is the same type of Hoya. Mine's just the red variety. This is also known as a Hoya latifolia. I think the latifolia name is actually the currently accepted name for this. But I did notice when we were at Callaway's, their label still said macrophylla as well. So either macrophylla or latifolia. This is one of the larger leaf varieties of Hoyas. These can get massive, 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 massive. And then over here, we've got some type of Peperomia caparata. Let's see if it says. It says Ripple Cuto. I'll flash it on screen for you guys. I think it's pronounced Cuto. These are $13. That's it's not a variety I've heard before. I'll have to do a little research, see if I can figure out when this came about. But we've got some very tiny Hoya carnosa compacta, the all green variety over here, and some even tinier ones over there all right you guys so here's another confusing little situation so these look identical to the pearls and jade pothos that we saw hanging on the other end of the shop earlier the ones on the other end of the shop were labeled as pearls and jade these are actually labeled as enjoy but looking at these they have a lot of that green splash on them so i'm inclined to think these are actually pearls and jade but then we've got some more Baltic blues over here. They are looking a little bit bluer over here than the ones we looked at before. And then some smaller philodendron silver swords. And these are only $25. That's a little bit more reasonable, I feel like. And I just spotted some philodendron micans hanging out over here. And we've got, these are Aglianema cherry. We start to see a lot of Aglianemas in the stores this time of year, you guys, because there are so many pink and red varieties and it's almost Valentine's Day. Everybody wants pink and red plants around that time. So that's why you start to see these popping up more. And then there's some more of the ones I like, the spring snow ones. We've got some smaller Spathophyllum dominoes over here, Peace Lily dominoes. Let's see how much these are. Oh, they're only one eight dollars for these. That's nice. I'm going to make a mental note of that. We've got some Anthurium Cobras. We've got some Silver Dragon Alocasias hiding out back here. Some more types of Dracaena. I think these are also commonly referred to as corn plants, if I recall correctly. All right, you guys, we're going to head inside now. There might be some plants in here, but I just want you guys to see all of the decor and pots that they have. Okay guys, so they do keep all of their African violets in here so that they're better temperature controlled and everything. 
all of their African violets always look fabulous. They look beautiful. And I like that they post a little sheet for everybody on how to keep them looking that way. All right, you guys, and here is the piece de la Restance that I wanted to show you, the giant Monstera Thai constellation. Look how huge it is. It's so beautiful. They have several of these in here. This is actually the best looking one I've seen, and they want quite a pretty penny for this, you guys. I'm pretty sure it's close to $1,000. Let me see if I can see the tag in there. Yep, close to $1,000, $830. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it down in there. It's a little too far away for the camera to get in there to focus on. But yep, $830 and this giant Monstera Thai constellation could belong to you. And I love this pot that it is in. That is super cute. And I'm really liking these little baskets that they have here. Those are really cute. All of their pottery like is fabulous, you guys. They got more basket type items over here. Pretty much every kind of like planter you could possibly like dream of. I guarantee you they will have something along those lines. Okay guys, and then over here we have all of their air plants that they sell and they usually stock quite a few of these and I just love it when they're in shells like this. I just think that is so cute, adorable. How cute this is, you guys. I love this. That's adorable. I don't know what you guys think, but that is a really cute little hanging propagation station right there. you guys when I say that I wish I had known they existed when I was buying furniture for my house because all these shelves and everything they have are so cute. Love these pots, you guys. So cute. Look how cute these hanging planters are. I love the way those look. And here we have another very large Monstera Thai constellation for you guys. Goals. Hopefully, one day mine will look that way. These are really cute, like terrarium type things here as well. Alright you guys, well I hope you have enjoyed getting to see one of my favorite local plant shops today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And if you did not see my last video that I was talking about a lot today where we did go look at a different plant shop in the area, I will link that right here for you so you can check it out next. Thank you so much for joining me today you guys and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!